So even though right now we're talking more about organic solutions with sculpting brushes, I also want to talk about a few hard surfacey ones, and they're also useful for organic sculpting just to kind of find the planes of the face. So I really don't differentiate them, they're just kind of more useful basic ZBrush brushes that I want to bring up early. The first one's going to be H Polish, so you can hit B H, and because probably you only have one brush that's named H Polish or it starts with an H, it's going to go ahead and select that with just two keystrokes. So with H Polish what you can do is you can go over your mesh here and you can polish down a surface and you can go to this side here and you can polish this up so you can very quickly kind of start making these look like really angular planar surfaces. Now the cool thing about the H Polish brush is it does respect edges so you can go through here and you can polish this side and then go over here and polish this side. Now one thing you're going to want to notice is I'm making my brush size larger than you would think. And that's to get a nice smooth shape out of my object here. If I make my H polish brush too small and say I want to polish the side of this chin out and I start using a small brush and I have to like polish a whole lot and move my brush around, see how wobbly that surface gets? If I make my brush size big and then just use a really light brush stroke, and this is another reason why a tablet is useful. If you're trying to use a mouse with this thing, it's gonna be really hard to control. So get a tablet, make your brush size big, and kind of overshoot it a little bit, and now you get very, very nice strokes, brush strokes down the side of the face here. And then you can go to the top here and just kind of make this top plane. And if that lip is getting in the way, hold down control, go to mask lasso, and then just go ahead and go to the side and just mask that out. And then you can go back in and that'll just ignore that masked area. Now, one more thing with this brush, let's go ahead and undo what we've done. You'll notice, for example, on this top brow here, we can hold down, uh, go to H polish brush and then polish this down. And then if we go to the bottom here, it'll polish up a little bit, but it's gonna start kind of having a hard time. If we go to this side here, it's gonna wanna H polish up into there. So what you want to do in this case is hold down Alt and let go of Alt. So you can, if you hold down Alt, that's going to polish out from a surface. So we can polish these two interior concave surfaces together. The convex surfaces are actually pretty easy and it'll respect edges. So as we go through uh, this surface here down to this bottom one, it'll respect that edge. But then on these interior concave edges, you got to hold down Alt and that'll H polish out to that surface. So one thing to keep in mind, and you can also hold down Alt and then I'll polish down. It'll kind of drag the stroke down a bit. So you can go through here and you can polish this, and then hold down Alt and you can polish this back up. And then Alt to polish, polish back out. So between these things, you can really go through and get a nice stylized hard surface look pretty quickly just by holding down Alt and letting go of Alt depending on the surface that you're trying to make. And always remember you gotta over crank the brush size a little bigger than you think to get nice smooth surfaces out of this brush. Now like I mentioned before, it respects your edges. So as we're making a hard surface edge by polishing one side and then another, it's gonna go ahead, it, yeah, I can't get rid of this edge. It, like I can go right down the middle and it's gonna pick one side or the other to kind of polish. Because if you go here to your brush option, so brush samples, you're gonna see this preserve edge when I have H polish selected is set to 30. Now here's another brush I like to use uh, where it doesn't respect edges. And well, before we get to that, if I turn on polyframe, you're gonna see as I'm polishing these edges together, it's basically pushing this geometry together. So now if I try to take my standard brush over there, see how it kind of just does some weird stuff in the middle? If you want to, control drag, because we have Dynamesh still selected, you can just re-Dynamesh this object, and that'll give you a lot more reliable surface to sculpt across. So you can H polish and re-Dynamesh, and that'll redistribute your geometry for you. Now one you can kind of use in conjunction with this is the pinch brush. So you can go to B, P, I, and that's the pinch brush. And you can see this preserve edge is set to one, uh, but in this case, what we can do is we can H polish to kind of get the basic forms and then we can use the pinch brush to kind of go through and pinch these to a nice hard surface. And in fact, even if you haven't used the H polish brush yet, you can still go through and pinch this. Now, depending on how big your brush is, you can actually use this brush to like pinch eyes together if you want, or pinch nostrils together, or even close mouths if you want to. So it's a very, very useful brush depending on how big it is and where you want to use it. But again, remember you can use it on edges here. You can really refine these edges that you've defined with the H polish brush here, or you can use it to just do overall changes, just like, you know, shrinking these eyes down. 
Now, just like we did with the HPOL Express, if I turn on Polyframe here and I go through and I start pinching this, you're going to see it's really doing some crazy stuff to that geometry. So again, if I try to sculpt across this, it's not going to look real pretty. That's in, when the case when dynameshing this again will redistribute that geometry and make it look a lot nicer. Now, in conjunction with H Polish and Pinch, I also like to use Trim Dynamic. So that's B, T, D. With the Trim Dynamic brush, you're going to see the Preserve Edge is also set to 1, like the Pinch brush. So if I switch to the H Polish brush, you're going to see all of these um, sample settings change. Preserve Edge is at 30. If I go to my Trim Dynamic brush, Preserve Edge is at 1, and a lot of other settings have changed. So now when I use the Trim Dynamic brush, you're going to see I can use this to also define planes. I can go through here and kind of trim my surface is down, but I can also go through here on an edge and I can use Trim Dynamic because it doesn't respect edges. I can go through here and just put a bevel right down that edge. Now we're going to get to Z modeler beveling. This is a little bit more box modely, but this is a good way to get bevels on organic surfaces or if you're just concepting something out, you can very quickly just go through and start beveling edges using Trim Dynamic. Now of course you can also use this in conjunction with Lazy Mouse. So if you go up here to your stroke menu, which we already have docked, up at the top here. So we tap L, we can turn lazy mouse on, lazy mouse on, you can change that lazy radius up, and now you'll get very nice, smooth, controlled strokes with your trim dynamic brush and get some nice hard surface looks going. And so you can use trim dynamic to kind of knock your faces down. You can go back in with your H polish and you can refine those faces a little bit. And remember to hold down Alt to sculpt up to a surface and then let go of Alt to sculpt down. You can even refine these bevels that you put in with your H-Polish brush because now we've defined edges on the sides of those bevels. Now H-Polish will polish this nice smooth surface and then refine and respect those edges down there. So you can use Trim Dynamic and H-Polish and Pinch all, all working together to kind of either define planes of an organic surface or to make an organic surface turn into a hard surface. Or you can use these in conjunction with clipping, which we'll get to in a bit, to give you a really nice hard surface look.